Hey everyone, welcome to the Multi-Location Marketer Marketing Podcast, episode one. We are super excited um, to be doing this. Um, I'm Elliot Olson, uh, joined here with my co-host, Matt. Say hi, Matt. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and uh, and <laughs> the, goal, the goal of this episode is to give everyone an overview of how uh, we see uh, multi-location marketing. What it is, what is it, um, how do we define it, how do you define it, um, and why does it matter uh, to you? So um, before we get into that, I thought since this is the first, po first podcast, we just share a little bit about who we are, um, why we're talking about local uh, or multi-location marketing, and uh, just you got, give you guys an idea of um, yeah, what this podcast is going to be about. So, um, Matt, do you want to just give everyone a little bit of an idea and some context of, yeah, like who we are and, you know, why we're, why we're talking about this? Sure. So my name is Matt Nichols. I'm the founder and CEO of Market Snare. Been in, uh, digital marketing since, uh, the mid nineties and, really focused on digital or on uh, multi-location marketing for about the last uh, 10 years or so. So uh, prior to that, uh, owned a digital agency, uh, maxed out at about 50 employees and really looking for um, opportunities to um, – Grow recurring revenue and, and we had a platform that we had developed that was a, a CMS. And, uh, about 10 years ago or so, we had, um, uh, a company come to us that was a national, um, company in the HVAC space that had about 2000 dealers. And one of the challenges that they had was really helping everybody make the transition to digital marketing mm -hmm. from how they used to do things. And, um, they asked us if there was a way we could help them with, uh, implementing a local digital marketing strategy and program for, um, their dealer network. And, you know, they, some of the challenges they had were uh, a lack of uh, organic visibility in each local market that they were in, um, trying to herd the cats, so to speak. Uh, they would have literally, uh, hundreds of different websites out there with, you know, dated product information, product that had been discontinued for three years, still on the dealer's websites. Um, their brand was really being butchered at the local level and they had no metrics or any way of knowing kind of what was going on. And so as we started to tackle that challenge, we realized that there really aren't that many good tools out there uh, to help companies that have you know, many locations, um, or they have to market at the local level across many local markets. So that was the challenge. And, and as we kind of dove into that, we saw that there weren't really uh, any good tools in the space to, to help people do that uh, and really address a lot of the challenges that uh, marketers have in, in doing this at scale. And so we built uh, a platform um, that really helps to solve a lot of these challenges. And so really for the last 10 years, we've been working very closely with franchises, uh, companies with dealer distributor networks, co-ops, um, nonprofits, multi-location healthcare organizations, you know, really anybody that has that challenge of, uh, gaining visibility and doing marketing at the local level across many uh, dis um, disparate geographic locations. And that's really the key um, that uh, we focus on now uh, is really how do we do this effectively and how do we provide tools for um, organizations to uh, overcome these challenges and take advantage of the opportunities that they have. So we've been uh, really ingrained in that space and we're really looking for how do we share some of this knowledge and information out there. There's a lot of misinformation in the space um, just because I think a lot of digital agencies and and marketers, they try to take and apply uh, the tactics and the techniques that they've used either 
in a single location, kind of local business or for national brands, marketing at a national level and apply that to these situations. And it's really a, a completely different universe. So there's a lot of challenges, um, but there's also a lot of great opportunities um, and a lot of exciting things that can be done. And so, you know, we really wanted to develop this podcast as a way to uh, take some of the expertise that and that we have. And, you know, really we work with about 30,000, uh, local markets across all the clients that we work with across a wide range of industries and really just talking about these topics, how people, um, are addressing some of the challenges, what opportunities they are taking advantage of, how they're building success, um, where they failed, um, and, and just topics in and around that space to really help marketers do a better job of looking local, getting better results at the local level, and ultimately, you know, uh, succeeding uh, where they may have failed in the past. Yeah. And we're, I mean, we're literally having conversations on a daily basis with, uh, you know, digital marketers that are responsible for 160 locations and they're doing it all by themselves, all the way up to national brands that have teams and, you know, all these different um, uh, local marketers are, you know, trying new things and um, they're discovering new ways of doing stuff, um, whether that's through tech or just organizationally or, you know, systems they've created. And so uh, because of that, we're really excited, you know, to share that with you guys. We'll be interviewing people, um, you know, contacts that we have. Um, you know, whether they're from agencies or from franchises. And so we just want this to be a place where, um, you know, if you're in the multi-location marketing niche, if you're a multi-location marketer, you feel, um, we want you to feel like this is a place you can come to, to learn uh, tools and tactics that are applicable to you. And, you know, where you feel like, hey, these are my people. Um, and so uh, having said that, let's just Let's get it right into it. Um, that's kind of the purpose of this podcast. But um, Matt, if you could just describe, you know, multi-location marketing, it has a bunch of different names. Uh, so I thought maybe what you could do is just kind of describe some of those different different names that people use uh, that are sy synonymous kind of with multi-location marketing. And then maybe just give us kind of like to you, what does multi-location marketing uh, mean? Sure. Yeah. I mean, in this space, you know, you hear a lot of different terms. There's no real... Uh, ubiquitous term that is the same. You know, you hear of uh, field marketing. Generally, that's kind of an older school term, I think, that people have used uh, to support salespeople out in the field where you have multiple people maybe at a local level. Um, through channel marketing, you hear that, you know, going uh, through, you know, your organization to, you know, maybe dealers or um, third party companies that are marketing your products and services that you're trying to support. You know, you hear about franchise marketing. Um, you know, again, a lot of times that's, you know, it gives the connotation of actually marketing a franchise uh, more, you know, maybe a more uh, um, accurate term would be franchisee marketing, you know, at the local level. Um, you also hear of uh, local marketing automation, which is tools and uh, tactics that are used to automate marketing at scale, you know, across uh, many local markets as well. So, you know, that is really the key when you're talking about multi-location uh, marketing. What differentiates it from just national marketing is that you have to really focus on a specific market. So say you're in 100 markets across the U.S., um, how you market in Miami, Florida is a lot different than how you might market in, uh, you know, Denver, Colorado, for example, or Minneapolis. Um, if you're in a space that has to do with weather, like, you know, HVAC, for example, uh, the spring season where you ramp up your marketing for, you know, AC repair and those types of things comes a lot sooner in Atlanta than it does in Minneapolis or um, Denver. So, there's so many different um, aspects to it that change from market to market. And really, the big tech companies have been rewarding, um, you know, what we call local relevance, you know, uh, more and more over the last, you know, five, six, seven years, it's really been trending that way. So if consumers are looking for um, what you do uh, in a certain market, the products and services that you offer, um, Google um, and, you know, other search engines and 
you know, even, you know, from a digital advertising standpoint, they're, they're serving up uh, results that they think their customers, you know, want to see. So um, they're going to give you local results set. So there's a whole, you know, different approach to how you become visible, how you reach those consumers, you know, in those local markets, than how you do it, you know, on a national level. And there's, you know, different tactics and, and tools that you need to put in place to make that happen. So same thing with um, digital advertising, you know, and even um, traditional marketing uh, channels like direct mail or uh, cable radio, you know, those types of mass uh, media platforms as well. So how do you make things really relevant to the local market? And how do you win and get get results from a digital perspective where there's algorithms and there's there's a lot of different factors that can influence your success? You know, that's really the challenge that um, multi-location marketers have because they're not just doing it in one local market or for one national brand. They're basically having to to differ their approach and um, content and things, you know, in, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100, 500, 1,000, you know, different markets and for different representatives of their brand at the local level. Right on, right on. Yeah, you mentioned, you, mentioned, um, you know, one of the things we wanted to talk about today was the difference between um, local marketing and how we see that versus multi-location marketing and then national marketing versus multi-location marketing. And you kind of alluded to national marketing, um, you know, the differences between that. Maybe you could kind of expand on like what's the difference between local marketing and multi-location marketing? Sure. So like local marketing, we think about generally I own a business and I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I, you know, I serve, it's a home service business, you know, maybe it's, you know, pest control or it's HVAC or it's, it's plumbing, you know, um, I'm not really going out of the Indianapolis market. I generally have a service area that, you know, may include Indianapolis, some of the suburbs um, around there, maybe some other towns in close proximity. And what I'm trying to do is really connect with consumers in that market. I don't care what's going on in, uh, you know, San Francisco or Phoenix. You know, I, I only really care about my local market. So while strategically there are some things marketing wise that are very similar you know, to any marketing endeavor, um, you are really narrowing your scope. And so how, how that works from an advertising perspective is a lot different. Um, you know, and you're really focusing on, you know, entirely on that local market. When you're marketing from a multi-location standpoint, you have to do the same thing, but you're now you're doing it across, you know, many local markets. And, you know, there's, there are several ways that you can approach that. One, you can just, you know, support your local representatives in each of those markets um, by giving them dollars. You know, we see, we see that very common, you know, co-op dollars and programs. And, and then you're letting them kind of handle the marketing at the local level. Um, the problem with that is obvious that, you know, you're going to get, uh, if you have 100 locations, you're going to get 100 different marketing programs, different usage of the brand. You know, some people might do a decent job. Other people, you know, uh, are not going to do a great job and you're not going to be happy with how they're uh, representing the brand and the results that they're getting. And, you know, you're reinventing the wheel in every local market. So there's very little efficiency. Um, and you're, you're just going to get a, a mixed bag of results. You're not going to really know what's happening in each local market. So there's, there's a lot of issues with that. And, you really need to be able to support uh, the local people, protect your brand, you know, bring uh, the assets that you have at a national level. Generally, uh, your your parent organization is going to have a lot more um, great, you know, uh, graphical assets, photography, video, good content. You're going to have thought through the conversion strategy and your target audience, you know, a lot in a lot greater detail. And you want to be able to, you know, give that great uh, expertise and those great assets to all your local representatives or your locations so that they can do a great job um, in each of their local markets. So you just have a lot more challenges uh, that you have to deal with and you have the, you know, have to think about scale and how do I do this all efficiently and how do I get great results? And, you know, what we find is at the local level, uh, the people that, you know, 
have a franchise or are a dealer, they're out there uh, doing the job, you know, selling the products and services, installing, you know, running that local business. And most of them just don't have the time, uh, the experience or the expertise to become really good at digital marketing. So at a national level, if you can do that and you can create programs that really make them successful, even if they're not doing anything at the local level and you're protecting the brand, you're building a solid, um, consistent user experience across all your locations, that really adds a lot of value and improves results, makes them a lot happier and builds a lot of efficiencies into the system. Uh, at the same time, it's um, you know really improving performance and results across the board because you're taking that collective knowledge of, of what you're doing and you're able to apply it to each of the local markets. So that's kind of what we we think of when we think of multi-location marketing, you know, kind of at a national level and how it differs from uh, just doing it at the local level where everyone is just really hyper-focused on their local market and kind of reinventing the wheel, you know, in each of those local markets. Yeah. And I would just, you know, add to that. I mean, a mature, like when we're looking at different and interacting with different organizations, you know, it's very clear how mature they are and their and their digital marketing based on how they manage that relationship with their local representatives. And you can kind of tell where they are at in their growth stage. And it's pretty amazing the amount of um, the amount of local marketers or, or, or businesses that are doing like traditional marketing and aren't doing much digital because they've never really valued that or done a lot of that. And when they start digging into, hey, how do we create a strategy and really put a system together to be able to you know, support our franchisees and take that burden of marketing off of them, how their organizations just explode, <laughs> like just conceptually just explode. Um, um, so, um, yeah, that's a great explanation. Um, uh, so I thought we could get a little bit into just like some of the challenges you kind of started to allude to that a little bit, but just some of the challenges that multi-location marketers have, um, I know, obviously, you talked about how, uh, you know, if you're leaving it up to, if you're leaving local marketing up to a franchisee or an agent or some sort of local representative, you know, that can be a really big challenge because they're not really meant, um, you know, they're not marketers. <laughs> so they're trying to do their business. They're not, they're not focused on, you know, learning how to market themselves. And so, you know, a lot of the conversations that we're having with people is, you know, they're, they're these, their franchisees, either they're not doing a good job or they're coming to the, um, they're coming to their, you know, their digital marketer that works for the corporate office and saying like, Hey, can you help me? And, you know, they're overwhelmed <laughs> that, that, that person's overwhelmed. And so, um, you know, maybe Matt, you could expand on that a little bit and then maybe just, talk about some other challenges that you've seen um, that kind of come up with, you know, traditionally with multi-location marketing. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, you know, as marketing's gone digital over the years, you know, it's as marketers, we love it. We love having that instant information, be able to make changes, but it has gotten, you know, exponentially more complex. So, you know, um, thinking about, you know, search engine optimization and all the things that go into that, you know, managing business listings, reviews, um, creating landing pages so you can get, you know, tracking and attribution, tracking phone numbers. I mean, these are all concepts that have been introduced to the mix. If you want to do a good job, you want to know how your dollars are being uh, utilized, you know, optimizing your return on your ad spend and the different marketing programs, um, organic versus paid. I mean, these are all, <laughs> you know, then you get into social media. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's really hard for even one uh, marketing professional to have a handle on all those things, let alone, you know, you get a, fran a new franchisee or a, a dealer and they come on board and now you want them to do a great job, you know, in the local market. You know, they're, you know, 99 percent of the time in my experience, they're just, you know, swimming in deep water, you know, and they're <laughs> and they feel like they're drowning. And so they end up you know, doing very little, you know, or they know they need to do something and then, you know, they waste money. They don't know how to evaluate vendors who's doing a good job at the local level. So it's just really hard. You know, they're they're out there kind of swimming on their own. And yet, 
you know, getting new leads, getting new customers. I mean, that's the lifeblood, you know, of their franchise and or or their business, their their local dealership. And so they really need to be able to connect with consumers that are looking for what they're doing. They need to be able to build brand awareness, make people in the community aware of them, communicate, you know, what's going on, special offers. And all this can be, you know, just really daunting, you know, at the local level. So um, if you think about if you're in charge of uh, having to, you know, do this to support your local dealers or your franchisees, your local reps, you know, and I'll probably just say that quite a bit, local reps, because we're trying to be broad enough to understand that every organization is a little bit different in, you know, how they go to market. Do you have agents? Do you have um, dealers? Do you have franchises? Do you have locations? Do you have other types of local representatives of of your brand, those things are all, you know, very similar um, in execution, you know, at the end of the day from a marketing perspective. So if you're a marketer and your your job is to support them, you know, generally what we hear is that, you know, you're going to get a lot of um, feedback. You're going to get a lot of complaints if you're not doing well, if you're not visible, you know, if people are doing searches for, you know, uh, what you do in your local market and they're not coming up, they're going to be complaining about that. And, you know, for good reason, right? Because if you're visible across those terms, that's going to, you know, connect you with people looking for what, what you're doing. And if you're, you know, your ads are going to the right people, you know, all those things are, are super important and, and, uh, they need those things to be successful. So they're going to be blowing up your phone. They're going to be emailing you. They're going to be, um, making their voice heard if we're not doing a good job in those areas for them. So that is, you know, one of the biggest challenges. You know, how as a marketer can you impact that, right? When a lot of the tactics and things that we might have done, as we talked about earlier, at a national level or at a local level, you know, are are not working. And so your challenge becomes, you know, how do I do this at scale in a way that actually works, that makes our our local people happy? Um and and that that becomes you know um, sometimes a, a showstopper for people, or you know they'll take shortcuts um, to be able to get something to everybody, but it's not stuff that's really working. And then you want to maybe give them dollars and say, hey, just hire somebody locally, so they stop complaining. Um, and then again, you know you're you're spending a lot more money than you need to. You might not have the budget to do those things. Um, you know, how do you localize content is a huge challenge, right? I mean, content is king in, in today's marketing world and it, it drives your visibility. So how do you localize that? Um, how do you, uh, get updates out there to everybody? A new product lines launched or, you know, like, uh, going through COVID, you know, there were different policies at the local level that organizations were uh, putting out there. How do you make sure that you sync all that? How do you coordinate, you know, maybe national advertising campaigns? and offers, you know, at the local level without just like sending them something and say, hey, update this, because as we all, you know, know that, you know, <laughs> only a small percentage of them are right. actually going to go and, and make those updates and, and do what you've asked them to do. So again, those are the challenges that you have. How do you leverage, you know, the power that you have at a national level um, and, and bring those things down so that you're implementing good strategy? And how do you get people to do what you need them to do or do it for them, you know, in an efficient way that's actually going to move the needle, get results? And then how are you going to have tangible you know, data to say, look, this is what we're doing. This is how we're improving. This is how many leads we've generated from you for you. This is how much business it's generating for you. Those are all important things, you know, as marketers that you want to be able to do things and then show them how they're working and then see what's working, what's not. How do I then make changes? How do I apply it across the board? Those are all, you know, big challenges and things that we're going to explore in this podcast over the next, you know, several yeah. weeks, uh, because each of those topics um, that I just kind of hit on could be, you know, multi uh, session, you know, podcast. <laughs> right. on, on the road. So how do you dive into those things? And so that's really why we're putting this podcast together. There's so many topics, so many things that, you know, are applicable to, you know, really overcome these challenges and, and get results that, you know, it's a topic that really needs to be talked about and discussed, you know, uh, at a deeper level. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure 
everyone who's listening to this right now at some, you know, is re- <laughs> there's something in that that is resonating with them. You know, I mean, just the idea of all these different things that you can possibly, you know, all these different tactics you can use, like, what do you focus on first? You know, what, like, where do you, where do you even start? You know, um, I had a conversation with a guy a couple of weeks ago. He's been there. He's been in this organization that has over a hundred locations and, it's just him and he's just got his head you know super deep and just trying to get a you know the crm figured out for his organization and so you know spending time doing digital marketing and figuring out how to support people is not you know is not even on his his radar right now and it's like you'd think that an organization of that size would have a grasp on this but it's very common and so um you know take that information with what you will, but that's the reason we're creating this because we, you know, it's, I think everybody to some degree, you know, you know, there are things that you should be doing, but a lot of times you're constrained by time or you, you're just not sure what step to take next. And so that's, that's kind of what we want to, well, that's a lot of what we want to dig into on this podcast is like, how do you create a system that works for you, for the organization, the size that you're at, um, you know, the staff that you have. Um, and yeah, yeah. Where do you start? Where do you start? So yeah. and there's um, a lot of misinformation out there. I mean, you can go and search, how should I do local SEO? Should I have, you know, multiple websites, one website where I'm, you know, pooling the domain authority or is local relevance more important? You know, those are all topics and you can find multiple answers out there. And, you know, the answer really is it depends on the type of organization you have, what you're trying to accomplish. But there are tactics and tools out there that a lot of people might not even be aware of. Right. I didn't know you could do that. Um, so there's there's a lot of that. There's, um, you know, uh, dialogue that needs to happen on, you know, this tactic versus this tactic. What's better? And, you know, when should you use this approach? When should you use this approach? You know, how do I you know, localize that scale? How do I, you know, put a co-op program together that's, that's going to work? I mean, there's, there's so many issues. Some are tech related, some are process related. Um, you know, how do I onboard, you know, new members of the, uh, of my program for my local reps, you know, uh, so many different topics and, you can find a lot of answers out there. You know, we obviously have what we think works well, you know, based on managing 30,000, you know, individual locations, we get a lot of data and, and, you know, in this space, things are fluid. Google just did a, a huge algo update, you know, last week that, you know, made a lot of changes. And so you have to look across the data of all, um, your locations and you have to say, well, what did this do? And and what does that mean? And how do we react to it if you have to do anything? Um, so those things are all uh, super important and it's great just to have an outlet to be able to um, talk about those things, discuss them, pros, cons, and, you know, uh, what's best for your organization. And so hopefully this can be a sounding board and, uh, you know, we want to be able to take in questions that people have that really, that we can answer, um, and, you know, help shape, you know, what some of our future content is. And it's a fairly, uh, niche space. So obviously, you know, we, we anticipate this being kind of a, a small community of people that are doing that, but, Every one of you that is dealing with multi-location, I mean, you're touching uh, tons of people. I mean, if you think about if you have 50 locations or 100, I mean, those are 50 or 100 businesses that are depending on on um, what we're doing, you know, as marketers to help them grow their business, um, achieve their dreams and you know, feed their families. Right. So they really care about what's going on, but they, they generally care about getting the results and they don't want to have to take the time to, uh, you know, learn all this and become an expert, but they want, uh, you know, companies like, uh, us, uh, marketers, you know, people that are working in businesses that are supporting them to do a great job for them. Right. And it, it means the world to them. And you can really have an impact on, you know, uh, all those local people that you are supporting. So uh, super important topic and and one we're excited to get into. Yeah. Well said. I'm, I'm with you there. It's really exciting to, it's really exciting to, to hear stories about people that we've either worked with or that we know um, who made a huge impact uh, at the local level, across the locations that they work with and, th- and those relationships. I mean, many times franchises are, 
I mean, they're, they're, they're somebody's dream. And so to be able to, um, support them well and get them excited about marketing is, uh, and, and get them results is, is just really fun. Yeah. And I would just add that without fail, I think every organization that, that we've ever worked with, when they start thinking about these things, how do I act more locally? How do I do a great job in each local market? You know, and what's the ideal local marketing program? And then how do I dial that in from market to market to really fit, you know, the market, uh, my local rep in that market? And they start thinking about those things and they start measuring, you know, the results that they're getting and, and really implementing tactics that can move the needle for them. I have not seen anybody that hasn't had, you know, really stellar results in that. When you, when you start thinking about it, you start educating yourself, you start thinking creatively about how do we do a great job in each local market? How do we impact the metrics, you know, that are making a difference? When you do that, you are going to get, um, phenomenal results. I mean, we're talking, you know, triple digit gains usually in the first few years. And then we've seen, you know, sustained high double digit growth, you know, six, seven, eight consecutive years. And, and that's really, um, the upside for you, you know, as you start to think about these and you impact and you, you, um, implement some of these strategies and tactics at the local level. And you really start thinking in that way. You know, we've seen companies just completely turned around, completely set, you know, consecutive record years because, you know, it's it's the last mile of sale of the sale. Right. Um, you can do a great job of uh, building your brand on a national level. But if you're not connecting with those consumers, you know, at the local level in a way that resonates with them, if you're not uh, visible or part of the conversation in your local market, when people are looking for the products and services that you do, you know, um, you're in essence invisible. They don't know about you. So as you start to, to raise that visibility and, and you're getting in front of more people and you're doing a great job of communicating your message and converting, you know, those things just snowball and you start to see just tremendous gains, um, you know, which really helps your company nationally. It helps your local people. They're happier. They're referring. It, it becomes a great way to add on additional, um, you know, whether it's franchisees or dealers, when you have an effective marketing program that you're showing them how you're supporting them. So the upside is just huge, you know, it, and I've heard many people say, um, not just us, but we, this in our experience is, you know, the case, but that local marketing is the greatest opportunity, you know, for national brands and national organizations that have to, to uh, market across, you know, many local markets because, it's just something that's really been underserved and people don't always grasp, you know, what an impact that can make. But if you think about it, if you tremendously grow the results across each of your individual markets collectively, it just makes a huge impact, you know. And what we found, too, is that it also, you know, just builds you know, what you're doing from a national branding perspective, the the visibility of the national brand grows because you're collectively growing in each of your markets. So it, it's just a great opportunity to really um, grow your organization and achieve your goals, you know, in ways that aren't maybe always super obvious because, you know, you're really like kind of dialing it down at the local level, but then you're using that local expertise. And if you can scale that out across all your local markets, it just makes a huge impact. Yeah. So it's exciting. Definitely. It's exciting to it talk about exciting. it. It's exciting yeah. to help organizations really, you know, um, catch on, you know, to uh, this, you know, this, approach and, and to really, um, see how they can take these tactics and, and strategies and, and grow, you know, their organization. Yeah. And if you've gotten this far into the podcast so far, you've probably realized that, you know, depending on your, your, your existing knowledge and expertise and, you know, maybe the size of your organization and just your history with multi-location marketing, you know, our multi-location, the way we look at multi-location marketing is, is pretty, um, there's just a lot to it. It's not just, it's not just focusing on maybe a national presence. It's how to create more local visibility. Um, how do we, how do we make everything look more localized? Um, you know, how do we leverage like 
our, our corporate assets and, you know, kind of use those in our, in our, you know, across our locations. Um, you know, how do we support them? And so, um, anyway, yeah, I just, I think, I think as you, as we continue on, um, you guys are going to start to realize that there's, there's just so much more that's available to you to do. I think a lot of times when we're talking to organizations, you know, they're overwhelmed, um, and they're doing, you know, a few things, but really there's so much more that they could be doing. Um, and so, you know, the question becomes, how do you do that? And we'll get into that more as we, you know, continue on in different episodes. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, we're excited about that. And, um, I think that that is it for this episode. So, uh, appreciate you guys listening. And, um, again, we're really excited about, uh, you know, sharing what we know, um, you know, interviewing guests that are in this industry, uh, and we're really excited about some of those that we have coming on. And so, uh, yeah, till next week, we will talk to you then. Bye y'all.